Hey, 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 we are back for the final installment of the Blitzkrieg. Guess what? It's not a multimeter. I lied. Well, I didn't really lie. It's still a cheapo. In the hot seat, the Elike DT6013 capacitance tester. Now, it's not an LCR meter, but it does test capacitors. Let's check it out. Already, right, what do you get in the proverbial box? Well, you do get one verbose box. Bright yellow, kind of that bumblebee going on, but it tells you you've got a digital multimeter, which is not exactly accurate, is it? No, it's not a multimeter, it is a capacitance tester. As well, you get your two crocodile clips. Um, you know what? Quality-wise, not too shabby, not too shabby. Very short leads. Um, we're gonna be using this pretty well for the majority of the test with the e-like. And finally, you get this one page, oh my goodness, one page and look how tiny the font is. Bring out your microscope, you just might need it. But this does tell us that we have three different frequencies, three testing frequencies from 800 Hertz to eight Hertz, depending on what we're testing. So uh, yeah, fit and finish, you know what? I like it. It is a uh, molded plastic, but it's a good high quality molding actually. No rubber inlay, no rubber at all, but um, you do have pretty grippy feel here on the sides. And once again, it's a step up from your plastic cheap o housing. So it, it's nice, it's nice. And you have a standing bale, tilt stand, fairly wide. Um, you know, yeah, you can definitely one hand this puppy, no worries there. So uh, all in all, pretty decent. Price-wise, this sent me back about 25 bucks Canadian, around $20 US, so it is in the cheapo zone. Once again, I love that selector switch. Oh yeah, clackety-clack. Very nice. And it's not going to get stuck between ranges. Uh, really, really good Passive job. and settings starting at the off or 9 o'clock position. 20,000 microfarad. 200 nanofarad. And as low as 200 picofarad. Top left, we have our hold. Just a standard touch hold. And on the right, we have a backlight. Yes, the little capacitance tester has a backlight. Oora! Bottom meter, things are a little bit more interesting. We have a, a capacitance insert. This is where you can put your electrolytics or uh, any capacitor for that matter. At the bottom, we have our capacitant inputs. We have our negative and our positive. And finally, at the top, we have our zero adjust. This is what you use to get a finite zero when you're measuring low capacitance, let's say in the picofarad range. Telling you this should be illegal. Whoa! Oh, oh, yes. Okay, let's turn it on. Bada boom, bada bing. And look at that big, bold font. Perhaps a little bit funky chunky, but uh, all in all looks pretty decent. Uh, in terms of viewability, yeah, we don't really lose it no matter what angle we're looking at. That's a good thing. And as well, it does have that backlight. Here we go. Oh, yeah. That is really nice. Contrasty and uh, a little bit of... Oh, wow, 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 wow. Why so short? That was, what, three, four seconds? Too bad, but, uh, uh, well, at least we have a backlight. All right, I brought out the Calvary. Here we have the CM7115A on the left. In the middle, we have our Exelvan M6013. Wow, another 6013. And, of course, started the show the DT6013 from Elike. And we're only going to look at four capacitors. We're going to start off from the high and eventually go to the low. All right, and you can see here the uh, 7115A is a, a lot similar to the uh, E-Lake. Here we've got that same zero adjust functionality as well. Um, no backlight, though, on the 115. And actually, this guy was about twice the price of the E-Lake. So it'll be interesting to compare the two. And, of course, the good old Exelvan capacitor meter. Um, this is a great meter. Not cheap, though. About 55 60 bucks and uh, it is a little workhorse though here we go so for the test i'm going to have as i said four capacitors i'm going to do a discharge for each of them and i will discharge them before doing a measurement on every meter just so they're all measured fair and square okay here we go this is a 560 microfarad survey says okay so we're getting a reading of 507 microfarad on the e-like just pause that Let's take it over. Take Mr. Nippon over to the Exelvan. And according to the Exelvan, 488 microfarad. Now we don't have a hold on the Exelvan. That kind of sucks. So um, that's a point for the E-like. And there we go. Wow, that's pretty close to the E-like. 505, 506 microfarad. So wow, those two are pretty well neck and neck. Next up, we've got a little 100 microfarad capacitor here coming up for oh, about 97.998 for the CM. 
And as you can see, that one's coming up with 93 microfarad, 93.12. And 97.9 microfarad for the E-like. So all pretty well in the same ballpark. All right, now we're gonna be looking at the lower ranges. We've got two capacitors left. Let's start off with this one here, a Sprague, Sprague. Ooh, Spraga, Spraga. Hey, by the way, I wanted to say thanks to everybody that left uh, a comment in uh, one of those polls I did a while back about uh, what you want to see on the channel. And yeah, suffice to say, the cheapos took the lead. The majority are quite happy with the cheapo reviews. Um, there was still quite a few that want to see an assortment of other electronics as well, and definitely those are coming as well as the more expensive multimeters. But it was great getting that feedback. And hey, everybody, I appreciate you taking the time to let me know what it is you want to see. Okay, back to business. Here we go. We're going to start off with the Spraga. Um, I thought we'd bring yeah. one more into the mix here for the lower ranges. This is the X-Tech uh, 380193 LCR meter. You can see we're getting a reading of 108, 108.6 nanofarad. And that is a 100 nanofarad or so capacitor. So 108 for the X-Tech. Let's see what Mr. E like says. Now, once again, we're going into the low ranges here. So what we got to do is put it into the 200 nanofarad range. And because we are kind of going low, I am actually going to use the inserts, the inputs on the meter itself, as opposed to the test leads, just because you always get some stray capacitance on the test leads. And this totally negates that from the equation. So stick it in there. Hopefully it's going to fit. And here we go. So we had a whoa, that is really close. So the X Tech was giving us 108.64. And look at 108.6. Oh my god, it's pretty well neck and neck. Now this is a $300 LCR meter compared to $25 for the e like So that is very, very accurate. Excellent. And Exavan is giving us a slightly higher reading of 115 nanofarad. Okie dokie. Let's final out what the one seven one one five says and actually let's put it to the nanofarad range first and if we have any no we have no straight capacitance at all so we don't have to use that zero just which is a good thing and let's put it in and what do we have what do we have what do we have pretty close 109.3 nanofarad so okay X tech the e like and the 7115a are all pretty well in the same ballpark only the exelvan was a little bit off for this low capacitance now we have one more one more tiny one where is it where is it it's so small right here right here and we're going to start off with mr x tech for this one and you can see the x tech is giving us 22.1 picofarad for the little one 22 picofarad all right, let's just hold that reading. And let's try it on the 7115A. Once again, we're going to go into our picofarad range. So that's right at the bottom here. It's as low as we can go. Whoops, a little too low. And stick it in, stick it in. And we're getting 26.3. Now remember, that was 22 for the X-Tech. And the Exovan is pretty darn close to the X-Tech. 22.4 picofarad. Very, very close. Okay, finally, last but not least. Well, actually, it is least and it's last. Picofarad range. So we just take our zero adjust. And we got to get it right down to zero. Almost, almost. Oh, looks like I overshot. There we go. Alrighty. And pretty close again for the e light coming up as 21.7 uh, picofarad. So awfully close to that expensive x tech So all in all, i got to say, it seems to be like a fairly good little robust instrument for uh, capacitance measurement. Now remember, this is, does not do ESR. So yeah, you're not going to be able to read the ESR uh, with your components, strictly capacitance meter. But uh, hey, you know what? I gotta say, all in all, considering it seems to do a pretty decent job. Okay, let's take a look on the okay, so this inside. three and a half digit uh, 2000 count capacitance meter with dual slope integration does have a, a nine volt connector here. So this now, nine volt battery connector is probably not the greatest uh, integration, you know, for your power, but uh, really you shouldn't have to be replacing it too often. So hopefully it'll last uh, over the long term. Now we had three Phillips batteries and look at that, bada boom, bada bing, bada bang whoa 
Oh, we got a fuse in there as well. Look at that. And uh, no shielding. Well, no surprise. You know my mantra. Let's take a closer look. All right, here we are on the inside. Uh, kind of interesting, isn't it? Let's start off with those input jacks. Split variety once again. Um, decent looking solder all around and, uh, you know, nothing really bad to complain about. Hey, a $25 tester after all. Here is the trim pot for the Ohm's Jest and it's nice and big. And I got to tell you, it's actually pretty decent quality too. So uh, nicely done, good solder and very, very clean. And as well, what do you see? Yes, we have a fuse in here. That is a 250 volt, 200 milliamp glass, five by 20. Uh, it's very, very nice. So good, good thinking, really. You know, there is always a chance of blowing your meter, especially when you're uh, having discharged that capacitor properly. At least you've got a little bit of protection. Wow, here. Talk about custom ability. Look at this. VR one, two, three, and four. So you can, you can adjust, self-adjust, self-calibrate this meter if you so dare. Finally, the main IC itself is cobbed, but we do have a couple of op amps, operational amplifiers, the uh, TL0628P, and as well, we've got some hex inverters as well. Uh, those are the, oh, I can't even read that, CD4069s, I believe. So, uh, yeah, your usual assortment of stuff. But uh, all in all, I gotta say, nice and clean, no flux residue, and uh, generally, good attention to detail here. Perhaps the only thing I'm not super crazy about is this 9 volt battery connector, but uh, well, you know, it is what it is. Okie dokie, Kenoki, gonna put it back together, come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the e like DT6013. Hey, this is a pretty decent little capacitance meter. If you don't want to spend a whole bunch, you just do with some hobby electronics per se, and you want to have a dedicated capacitance meter, then here is the one for you been using this believe it or not for a few months now and I gotta say it has served me quite well a uh, pretty good attention to detail overall and as you can see it is really accurate definitely stays up there in contention with those $300 LCR meters uh, for a fraction of the price possible downsides well the light doesn't last for long but hey that's not a big deal really is it um, it is manual ranging so you're gonna have to play with that selector switch when you are changing your capacitors that zero adjust works really well though and I have to say all in all I haven't had any issues with this meter be like 6013 gets a solid four out of five stars hey thanks for watching this final installment of the Blitzkrieg Chippo Multimeter Bonanza. It was a blast bringing it to you guys. Oh, I had a lot of Make sure fun. Leave your comments below. I'm gonna be drawing at least one lucky winner, maybe two, and one of you or two of you are gonna get a new multimeter. I'll do that draw shortly, probably in the next week or so. Till the next one, keep on testing. Already running a little test here in the name of science. Some viewers have asked me if the little Unity 120C with the jack sharing or the input sharing of the milliamp as well as the, uh, the rest of the uh, settings, what would happen if we went from AC volts to current accidentally? Well, it was a good question and I'm up for the task. Here we go. Will the meter blow? Will it survive? Soon find out. Three, two, one. And look at that. And we're back in AC volts. And look at that, it survived, it survived. Good job, Unity. There you go. I hope that answers your questions. Keep on testing.